Hey everybody, I am going to show you guys how long it takes for the tadpoles to come up. You don't see anything right now, but we're gonna go ahead and give them a little bit of food. They love goldfish flakes and they also love pellets is actually their favorite. You just sprinkle some of this onto the surface. These are thin, so it spreads around pretty fast. Give it five minutes. There'll be hundreds of them at the surface that come up from the murky water. This pond, probably once a week or so, this one, I bring the garden hose out like that, let it run a few hours, it fills it back up. It also leaks really slowly out the side there. When we shut it off, we make sure none of the tadpoles get trapped on the edge and keeps the water fresh. There's just too many in here for the biological cycle to handle, so we have to do partial water changes every now and then. Oh look, they're already coming up for the food. Look at that, look at them. Good amount of them. Look at them going crazy right there. So that right there is a solar panel running a tiny, tiny pump that brings it up there, gives it filtration, adds extra heat. That's why they're growing so fast. Frogs need heat. Look how green some of that moss is right there. And that slime looks really cool. It all helps filter everything inside the pond. I like it. Look at the feeding frenzy starting. See all that movement? We just give them a little bit of time and the whole surface will be covered in these guys. See them coming up all over the edge? I think they prefer pelleted food because a few of them can just latch onto it. The whole surface will be clear of this stuff in maybe a hour. Look at them all, all around the edges. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a bullfrog somewhere at one of the other ponds. Good amount of movement. Only been a couple minutes. Oh, now they're starting to go into the center. Once a few do it, they all follow the lead of the others. So we now have four... Um, yeah, we had four frog ponds full of the tadpoles we moved. And there's another one in the woods that we shut down. And another one in the woods we didn't stock. Because I thought it was cruel putting them out and having them in the shady woods where they would develop very slowly. So we didn't put any there, but we left the pond there in case the tadpoles wanted to do something. Our friend the water skimmer right there is a good guy to have around because they eat the mosquitoes. They kill mosquitoes if they're not hungry even. It's a really good creature. Oh my gosh, there's another tick on me. We have a lot of ticks. Whenever I get them, just throw them in the water. Those parasites can't swim. Look at them all. There's so many of these cute little guys. Hundreds of them in here. Oh, and there's even a spider friend right there. Um, so the metal pond, if you've know, seen that from my other videos, the one I drilled a hole with the filter on the side so they wouldn't come out when I flush them or flush the water to clean it. Something, whether it be a bird or whatever, something went in there and ate a good amount of them. But it's natural. It's bound to happen. You know, the percentage of rate that ones that will actually turn into frogs is less than 10%. And it's only about 2 or 3% that will go on to reproduce. Their prey, their food for other animals, it's completely natural. For that reason, we're not going to screen in the top or anything. We're just giving them a shot at life here, having it open. The first ones that turn into frogs will inevitably start eating the other tadpoles as food. Frogs aren't like animals, like humans or cows, where if they eat another one, they're going to develop some kind of disease, like mad cow disease, if you know what that is. It doesn't happen with frogs. Look at this. There's so many of them coming up to the surface. Let me zoom in for you guys now that the action's really getting going. And I don't even think they're all up yet. Look at them. All around the edge. Cute little guys. Now, I said a lot of them got eaten or something from the metal pond. Now, I technically don't even have to feed the metal pond. There's still about 10% of what there was for tadpoles, and because there's so few of them now, it's kind of self-sustaining. It's producing enough algae and slime that the tadpoles really take no interest in the food I put in since there's already a good amount and they're already kind of full. So, yeah, look... It took only a couple minutes for them all to start coming up. Sorry about the glare, but there, you can see them pretty good if I'm right above, like this. They love those flakes, especially when they start to soften up. Same with the pellets. They go nuts when they start softening up. 
Now you guys can hear the bullfrogs. The bullfrog came here naturally. We did not move the bullfrog. It just showed up at one of the ponds. And that bullfrog may eat the other frogs. These ones here, which are mostly wood and green frogs. Because the bullfrog's bigger. But I'm not going to get involved with that. The bullfrog showed up. He can eat him if he chooses. It's natural. Look at that. They're really going crazy. I love these little guys. It's also a really nice hobby, keeping these little hatcheries, because you got to take care of them often. I feed them out here almost every day. Don't go more than three days. A couple times a week. This pond maybe once a week. We come out with a garden hose and give it a really slow flush. That water right there, I'll probably leave it on until like dusk. Then I'll move it to another pond to stay on throughout the entire night. Just slowly filling. If you fill it really fast, it may shock them with cold water. Because that's freezing water coming out of the well right now. Just want to slowly change the temperature of the water. Slowly. Not chlorinated or anything. Can go right in here. I love these little guys. Pretty soon the Department of Natural Resources is going to give us little signage to put around the forest here because I um, filled out some forms and we are officially a little wildlife refuge on the property. We feed the animals, provide water. There's different shelters around the woods. We got all these frog ponds and habitats, so it was very easy to get that um, permit for that. Yep, so we'll have a bunch of little metal signs showing up and put around the woods. Wildlife refuge boundary signs. That's kind of cool. Alrighty, everyone. Just shot I show you a actual little video of them without the shorts. I probably won't do as many shorts lately. Some people love them, but some people hate them too. I'll keep them to a minimum. That's what I got from most people's feedback. And I got a little carried away, I know, with the shorts. So if I want to make more shorts, I'll just combine them into an upright video if I know there's going to be multiple parts. You hear there's lots of frogs. I don't know if they're necessarily bullfrogs. At least one of them is, but it sounds like multiple are making noise at the moment. Hmm. Wow, I think there's even more and more that are slowly coming up from the bottom. But it'll, it's still going to be a little while before they turn into frogs. You see that really big one? If you can see towards his back, there's, he's developing little nubs. Give them like two more weeks, the bigger ones are going to have little legs on the back. Then they'll develop front legs, and then they'll become a froglet, which can come out onto land, but it still has its tail for a little while. We'll do little updates every now and then. I'll give you an update. I'll probably let it go another two weeks before we get another. These things hurt so bad. Look at this. That's called a no -see -um. They're so tiny, you can barely see them, but yet they hurt so bad when they start biting. And they leave a pretty big mark, and it's itchy for a while. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great night. All right, everybody, here we are to part two of this video. Look at the amount of tadpoles here. Probably by now 80% of the food is gone. There was way more of these little pellets in here. I think I'm going to add more because they're still obviously very hungry. They're, they're, they are developing extremely fast in this pond because it's full sun. And there's also water skimmers. They will eat mosquitoes that land on the water. If a mosquito lands down on the water, those guys are they'll race right over and attack it. Yep, there's another little water skimmer there. These guys love these pellets. So many. This water is actually not that dirty, but we are going to flush this one also. As soon as that other one's done, I'll probably sw switch them over at about dusk or so. Tons and tons of tadpoles in this little pool. All right, here's the metal pond I mentioned. You see, there's only a couple in here now. I think something 
a bird or who knows what came in here and ate a good amount of these guys. But the amount of slime, this is very self-sustaining. They have all their own food. You see, they're not even interested in the pellets there that sunk. Not really interested because they have so much nice natural slime. I already flushed this one this morning. You see, I have this piece of filter with a hole on the outside so they don't get swept out while I'm doing that. And look, there's even a water skimmer friend. And we didn't put any of those water skimmers in here. They just showed up naturally. That's what happens out in the country when you have no insecticides. There's just natural predators that show up for the mosquitoes to keep them at bay. I wish the natural predator of the ticks would come by today, which is the turkey. They are going crazy on this pond. I just gave them more food. Look at all those little mouths all over the place eating. There's so many of them eating right now, going crazy. All that food will be gone in like 20 minutes. <laughs> 